The leader of the first workers state lived in reclusive comfort. He felt insecure even about those closest to him. One by one the most senior communists who had planned the political and social transformation of the country became his victims. Nikolai Bukharin had helped Stalin to power but then dared to criticize him. At first Bukharin was isolated in his Kremlin flat with his young wife. He remained a loyal communist even when the moment of arrest came. It was terrifying, tragic. He literally fell down on his knees before me and asked forgiveness for ruining my life. He said that if he could ever have imagined that his life would end this way, he would have run as far as possible away from me. No matter how strong his love, he would have suppressed it. He asked me never to forget his letter, which is now called his testament, and without fail to bring up his son, a Bolshevik. That's the kind of faith he had, a Bolshevik to the end. Bukharin's fate was sealed at one of a series of show trials specially designed as propaganda events to create fear and instill obedience. The trials were a concoction of fake evidence and false accusations. Confessions were forced through torture and threats to the victims' families. Officials and journalists in the courtroom played their part in the same drama. Boris Yefimov, who attended Bukharin's trial as a newspaper cartoonist, says he believed the confession he heard was genuine. How could I doubt it if with my own ears I heard Bukharin describe himself as an enemy? How he had planned to overthrow Soviet power, to hand over the Ukraine to the Germans, how he told of his betrayal. What would you have said in my place if you'd heard a man confess his crimes with your own ears? It was a kind of hypnosis. In his cartoons for Pravda, Yefimov obediently took up the prosecutor's description of the accused as vile dogs. Yefimov applauded when the death penalty was pronounced. When they read out his death sentence, something snapped inside me. I felt that I'd changed, that the lights over our wonderful Soviet Union were extinguished.
thank you to spare my wife and child.